we're finally hitting that massive milestone of 100 issues. That means that I've made 100 videos on this comic book series, or more because of the annuals and that. Yeah, so good. <laughs> What is going on guys, welcome to this video, my name is Cameron and this is the review for Ultimate Spider-Man issue 100, one of the craziest milestones to, I mean, we, I've reviewed 100 comics of the Ultimate Spider-Man series, now it's took a while obviously because of university and everything that I've been going through, but we finally got there and now we technically only have about 30 issues remaining pretty much. What, like, Jesus, that's scary. Nonetheless, it's been an amazing journey for you guys to follow me on this Ultimate Spider-Man series. I mean, issue 100, let's just go. So, previous issue we saw Peter Parker reveal his identity to Aunt May, something that we thought would never happen in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics or in any Spider-Man comic, I mean, it's crazy. And then we also had Mary Jane kidnapped by what looked like a clone of Peter Parker with a scarred face. Now this dude looks creepy as hell, so I can't imagine what Mary Jane's feeling like. But then we also have the return of Gwen Stacy and realising that she technically is kind of a clone. She doesn't remember where she came from, so I think it's pretty obvious that, well, yeah, sh she's a clone. And on top of that, at the very end of the issue, we had Richard Parker, aka Peter Parker's father, come back from the dead. Now in this issue, we're going to figure out what happened with him and we're going to see pretty much everything from his perspective, more or less. So there are some surprises at the end of this issue and of course, one of the most major parts of the comic hits you right in the feels and that's towards the end as well with one major character. So guys, without any further ado, let's get into this issue because it's issue 100 of Ultimate Spider-Man. Let's go. Okay, so opening up the first pages of Ultimate Spider-Man issue 100. Wow, what a milestone. Now you can see picking up from pretty much where the last issue left off with Peter Parker and Aunt May and Gwen Stacy stood arguing in this house after Peter Parker finally and completely out of nowhere told Aunt May that he's Spider-Man. Now on top of that, we also had the return of Peter Parker's father, Richard Parker, who has been believed to be dead for the entire Ultimate Spider-Man series. So obviously this is a massive shock not only to Peter Parker and Aunt May and everyone like that But to us as the reader as well It's kind of like out of nowhere like everything's happening at once and I just really quickly want to acknowledge that first reaction from Peter Parker where he didn't want to hug his father. Like, Peter seemed really freaked out, but I just love how he sort of embraced his father as he hugged him and he sort of felt safe again. And you could just see by the expression on Peter's face that it was almost like everything was going to be okay no matter what happened next. But let's not forget, Mary Jane has still been kidnapped by this Peter Parker with the messed up face. Now looking at the craziness that is going on on screen, we have this awesome character jump into the comic out of nowhere, and it is another clone of Spider-Man with six arms and in a black suit, almost representing that Venom symbiote Spider-Man costume from this Ultimate Universe. And something else that I really like is that Peter Parker with the messed up face, I actually really like his costume design. It's almost like his costume design is representing that Peter Parker clone, like Peter Parker's face is all messed up there and his costume is almost like a flawed version of the original Spider-Man costume. It's really awesome. But now going over to Richard Parker and one of the really things that I found strange whilst reading this comic was just how calm and collected Richard Parker was. I mean, something like he comes across as if he's known Gwen Stacy for ages, almost like he's trying to look after her and he just seems really calm in this situation overall and then he starts giving his backstory on everything and we actually learn that Richard Parker never got on the plane that killed him. So throughout this entire Ultimate Spider-Man series, it's been thought that Peter Parker's parents and Eddie Brock's parents died in a plane crash. Now we're actually learning that Richard Parker never got on the plane. And so for the last 10 years or so, Richard Parker has actually been thought to have been dead all by the government, all by the legal stuff that actually makes him alive. So technically, he's been under the radar. And one of the most devastating things about that is the fact that Richard Parker couldn't actually reveal himself to Peter Parker in any way. Like, he couldn't be part of his own son's life, but he could watch from afar. And that is honestly just awful. But turning over the page and going back over to this Spider-Man clone fight is honestly really, really brutal. I mean, it's technically Peter Parker going up against himself. 
And one of the things that I love about this is that it's almost like a split personality, like the black suited Spider-Man sort of represents Peter Parker's humorous side and sort of taking everything lightheartedly whilst fighting and making jokes. And then you've got the scarred, flawed Peter Parker, who is a lot more serious and a lot more brutal. And you can just see that right there, that he actually kills the black suited Spider-Man. I just love that sinister look where he looks up from the dead body and actually looks over at Mary Jane and you're just like... That is creepy as hell. But once again, turning over the page, we're going back over to Richard Parker and his story as to what has happened for the last 10 years. And you can see that he was approached by the CIA because they were concerned about a character known to us as the readers as Nick Fury, head of S.H.I.E.L.D., which of course is like a massive famous character now. And we know that he's actually one of the good guys. But back then, 10 years ago, the CIA were actually frightened of him. And one of my favorite lines of this actual comic is the part where the CIA agent actually refers to a weapon like a spoon and I just thought that was awesome because it is technically true now something that I think the comic does really well is how Peter Parker just kind of keeps asking how Gwen is alive like what's all this other stuff and it's almost like Peter is representing us as the reader like we just want to know how Gwen is alive and you can see that it's being teased sort of but then Richard Parker just keeps sort of putting it down and he keeps talking about how there's a lot more details to go into it and he's getting there and it's almost like the writer Brian Michael Bendis is telling us as the reader that that we will find out soon enough. And we also discover that Richard Parker discovered that his own son, Peter Parker, was Spider-Man from that Venom fight video in like issue 36 or something like many many issues ago so I think it's quite evident that Richard Parker knows quite a lot of details about Peter Parker even though he's never met his son recently like since he's been growing up and everything he still sort of kept track of Peter Parker and I just love it and find it quite devastating how Richard Parker right here is watching Peter and Mary Jane from afar sort of witnessing his son enjoy love and a girlfriend and just sort of enjoying life growing up and honestly this comic just makes me me miss Peter Parker and Mary Jane's relationship so much because they just look so so good together but getting through the issue again we actually learned that Aunt May already knew that Richard Parker was alive and this explains so much because when Richard Parker actually revealed himself to Peter Parker in the previous issue Aunt May didn't actually seem too startled and that is because Richard Parker had already walked over to Aunt May before whilst in New York City and you can just see by Aunt May's reaction that she is flipping out crazy at him because he's been gone for 10 years and then all of a sudden he just shows back up out of nowhere and I just love it how protective Aunt May is over Peter Parker sort of telling Richard Parker to stay away from Peter because he's the only Parker who's actually got something going for him and little does she know that Peter Parker's life is the craziest out of everybody's it's so awesome but anyway as we continue through the issue you can see that the same question is asked again from Peter as to how is Gwen still alive and as that is going on a crazy amount of soldiers and also known as spider slayers along with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. are stood outside Peter Parker's house and if you remember in the previous issue Nick Fury actually learned from the Fantastic Four that there was a clone of Peter Parker running around New York City and obviously there could be many many more now remember at the beginning of this video when I told you guys that there was a lot of surprises at the end of this comic well we're about to come up to the end of the issue and this is where it kicks off with Gwen Stacy actually transforming into the carnage symbiote and launching itself towards the shield soldiers and on top of that another shocking thing that actually comes out of this issue is Aunt May suffers a heart attack from all of the craziness that is going on like she literally just witnessed Gwen Stacy turning to the monster that killed her in the first place I mean it is all seriously kicking off the next issue is going to be amazing and then of course the final page with the scarred Peter Parker leaning into the camera shot and implying that Mary Jane has gone through some kind of transformation but we'll have to wait until the next issue to figure out some of that but before we end this issue guys since this is issue 100 of the ultimate spider-man series there are actually some concept drawings from matt bagley throughout this entire ultimate spider-man series of certain characters and as you can see on screen we've got the kingpin we've got iron fist we've got spider-man we've got peter parker we've got gwen stacy and everything like that we've got kitty pride and her costume it's all so awesome and i think it's really interesting how they actually included this in the comic at the very end i mean this is issue 100 and i hope you guys enjoyed it Thank you so much for reading, thank you so much for enjoying this comic, but now let's go back on camera and talk about the comic as a whole, and the highlights that it gave us. Let's go. Oh my god. Right, just, the entire issue was really good, but that one moment that like hits you right here is when Aunt May has a heart attack, like, that is the most brutal thing to happen, on top of everything that's going on, 
That is Peter Parker's worst nightmare. That Aunt May would have a heart attack if she found out that he was Spider-Man and obviously worrying about him in danger all the time. And not to mention, let's just count the things that are going on right now. Aunt May finds out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Gwen Stacy comes back to life. Richard Parker returns from the dead. Nick Fury stands outside their house with guns and robots and everything like that. And not to mention, Carnage comes back. Like, Gwen Stacy literally turns into Carnage in front of Aunt May. And she just cannot handle all of that craziness. And so, I feel really bad for her. And especially because we've known Aunt May for 100 issues now and to see her actually go through something like this is just mental one of the better things to come out of this is that now that aunt may like is like having a heart attack sort of thing she's most likely going to be taken to hospital and that means that peter parker can kind of stop worrying about aunt may for a second and can actually go out there and find mary jane so even though it's bad it's also like technically good as well because it puts aunt may in a safe place in the hospital well i don't even know why i'm trying to justify this but you know yeah, I really liked the inclusion of Richard Parker and his backstory and the whole thing about him not getting on that plane. Now, one thing you've got to remember, guys, is that, like, it's all from his perspective. Like, there's no actual proof that this is what happened. I mean, it's like all government is CIA stuff and everything. Like, you can't believe anything that these people say. So just keep, like, take it with a pinch of salt with some of the things that Richard Parker was saying because some stuff is going to come to light within the next few issues because, like... Yeah, did you see that? Like, he knew that Gwen Stacy was the Carnage symbiote. So, it's pretty mental what Richard Parker has been doing with his experiments and everything. Yeah, just keep an open mind. But going over to Mary Jane being kidnapped by the clone of Peter Parker, we also got the clone Spider-Man with the six arms. And he also liked that black costume to represent the black symbiote with, sorry, the Venom symbiote. And it was awesome. And... It was kind of brutal as well because these two Peter Parker clones were fighting each other and you could tell that one of them wanted to protect her by turning her into something crazy and the other one was like a genuine like normal Peter Parker that just wanted to protect her regardless and he died. So technically if Spider-Man goes up against himself, one of them is probably going to kill each other and that is exactly what happened. And as I said in the review, the scarred Peter Parker, I really, really like his costume design. It's sort of like a representation of of that Peter Parker that is wearing it. So anyway, going back over to that thing about Gwen Stacy turning into the Carnage symbiote, that is one of the worst things ever to do to a massive comic book fan and ultimate Spider-Man fan. As a reader, I mean, they put Gwen Stacy back in front of us and then just ripped her straight back out of the comic again. And I loved that. I mean, that is something that just keeps you on the edge of your seat. The anticipation to see what the heck was going on is just, man, it's so crazy. The Clone Saga is like kicking off something like crazy right now and it's awesome i think one of the best things about this comic as well is the art style like i think it really shines through in this clone saga especially because there's different clones of peter parker so mark bagley has the opportunity to draw spider-man in many different ways with different sort of arts and textures and everything like that and a good example is the scarred clone of peter parker i reckon that was really cool to draw for mark bagley and of course he looks awesome but as for the end of the issue we saw that the scarred Peter Parker actually changed Mary Jane and whatever he did actually worked. So, yeah, we're going to have to find out what's actually happened to Mary Jane. Does she have spider powers now? Does she have super strength? Well, it, it's a little bit worse than that. But you guys are going to have to wait until the next issue to find out. So for this issue, in terms of how awesome it is, obviously, as I've already said, it's super awesome. And that is why I'm going to give this issue, again, a 9 out of 10. The Clone Saga is just amazing throughout. And I'm the massive fan of the Clone Saga in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. And I hope these issues of the Clone Saga are proving that to you guys as well. I hope you really enjoy it. But before we end this video, guys, if you remember, I actually did a giveaway for these pop figures about a couple of issues ago. And the giveaway was for actually to go over to my second YouTube channel and watch my first video on that YouTube channel and then leave a comment below. And so that's what you guys did. And I actually forgot to reveal a winner. So the reveal to this is actually someone called Sakib Ishraq Rashid. I think his name is. Sorry if I butchered your name there, but you are the winner for one of these pop figures. So I'll send that to you if you just want to get in contact with me or I'll get in contact with you and we can arrange an address to send this pop figure to. So thank you so much for taking part in the giveaway. Thank you for checking out my video on my second YouTube channel. And if any of you guys haven't seen my second YouTube channel yet, go check it out. It's basically just me and my life sort of thing. I've only got two videos on there at the minute, but I'm getting to it, don't you worry. And since this is Ultimate Spider-Man issue 100, 
we're holding another one. So guys, leave a comment on this video. Let me know what you thought of this comic in the comment section below, and I will choose a winner in the next issue review. So guys, if you want a chance of winning this, leave a comment below. Now that is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video. Again, don't forget to check out my second YouTube channel. All links are in the description. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date in all of these videos. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye.